What is going on everyone? So today I'm going to show you how I created this quiz application using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So here we are. Go ahead and click on play. And then it's going to ask me some questions. So I'm going to go ahead and click on it, get it right there, it turns green. Also the score updates and then the progress bar will progress as well. So I'll go ahead and click the right answer again, it turns green there. And then if I click the wrong answer, so for this one, I'm going to say 20% is going to turn red. And then again, let me see if I hit the wrong answer one more time. You'll see that it turned red again here. And now we'll utilize local storage as well. So here I can type in my name, but I already played through this again. So let me just say um, Brian 2. And then I'm going to hit save. And actually before I hit save, I'll show you, I can't even click on save unless I type something in. So that's a cool little effect. We're going to do two. So I'm going to hit save. And then now we go to the high scores button. And now you can see that uh, my score right here is 200. And then these are previous uh, tries I went before I started this video. And simply I go back home and then go back into the application again. And then same thing on mobile, same concept here. So without further ado, let's go ahead and start coding. All right, so here I am on VS Code. And the very first thing we're going to do is create a index.html file. So go up here. Click on the new file and simply type in index.html. Then I'm going to go ahead and I have Emmet installed. So when I hit shift exclamation, I can just press tab. It automatically fills out for me. And then here we can just put like, um, just put homepage for the title. And then what I'm going to do is we're going to link a style.css. So I'm going to type in link, press the tab key. It automatically creates that for me and then we're going to type in style.css and then eventually we're going to add font awesome so i already have this up on the side but that this is completely optional you do not have to worry about this if you don't want to but that's basically if you want to have the little icons for like little design effect but uh leave that out for just now but uh what i'm going to do now is go into the body and we're going to start creating our actual div so first things first is create a class called container. So in order to do that, you press dot container, and then I just press tab. And now within this container, I'm gonna press enter. So now we're inside of it, and I'm gonna create a ID. So I'm gonna go hashtag, and then I'm gonna do dot, or not, no, I'm gonna hashtag home, and then dot flex column, and then I'm gonna do dot again, flex center, and then press tab here. And now I'm going to hit enter again. And these classes are essentially going to style pretty much the entire page. And then we're going to use them on other pages as well. And then we're going to go and create the first H1. And we're going to just say, are, let's see. Yeah, are you ready? And I'm going to hit uh, command S and save this. And then I'm going to right click. And I have live server installed as well. So that way I can actually see it live without me having to constantly refresh the screen so pretty much we can see here that it's working so if you don't have that install go ahead into the extension uh, extensions tab and pretty much install those in there and then let me just get rid of this uh thing right here for one second so now under the h1 i'm gonna press enter and then we create our first a tag which you saw earlier was the play button pretty much so press a press tab there and then the link, we're gonna create this link eventually, but right now we're just gonna put slash game.html. And then I'm gonna add a class of BTN. And then within here, I'm just gonna say play. And then the little cool um, shortcut, if you press shift, alt, and the down arrow on the Mac, it automatically copies it down. I'm not too sure on the windows, but uh, that's one way to do that. And then we're going to change game to just high scores. And then simply edit the inner text and change that to high scores here. And then we're going to change the class. Actually, we'll keep the class here, but let me add an ID. So ID is equal to high score dash BTN. And then we can go ahead and save this. Now you can see this is what our screen looks like. Now here, let's go ahead and... Uh, Let's create the style CSS actually because I want to show you how to make this look a lot better than it is right now. So style.css, press enter. 
And eventually we're gonna add the um, font awesome icon. So let me go ahead and uh, put that in now just to save some time. But basically, if you do have font awesome or have used it before, then this should be pretty easy to do. But I just copied this code in right here. And that's right next to high, high score. So basically do um, I class equals FAS space. So let me, um, so basically copy this code right here into your um, next to high scores. And that'll give you the icon. And right now you can't see the icon because I don't have Font Awesome installed or linked. But if you don't already have an account of Font Awesome, go ahead and create one. And then simply when you go up to your, uh, I already have it here. You go to your profile image and just click on the Fun Awesome CDN and it'll lead you to this page where you can copy this link here. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this. And if you don't have an account, you could probably just look at my screen and just type exactly what I'm typing, but that's probably gonna be really annoying. And maybe it might not work. I'm not too sure if it works um, for everybody's account. Maybe this might be specific or not, but um, if you can go ahead and add this to the top of your heading, head tag right here, right below the style of CSS. Save that, now you can see we have the icon. Now again, if you can't get this to work, then don't worry about it, it's not necessary. And if you can't get it to work, you can just delete this and worry about that later. But that's just in case you wanted to have the icons there. So now, let's go to style CSS now. And then here, I'm gonna target uh, the root of the page, or technically you can just say body too, but um, right here I'm basically gonna say background color. And I want to have to be RGB of 29, 26, and then 26. So now it is pretty much like a darkish gray, depending on um, what screen you're looking at. And then I'm gonna make sure we target everything here with the asterisk or shift eight on your keyboard. And we're just gonna do box sizing border box. And then margin, zero, padding, zero. And then we use rem mainly. So uh, rem typically is 16 pixels, but well, there's a little cool trick you can do where you do this and set it to a uh, font size of 62.5%. And basically anytime you type in a rem, one rem would be 10 at that point, 10 pixels, and then 1.6 would be essentially 16. It's much easier to, uh, figure out what you're doing in terms of RAM. But again, some people do, some people don't. And then font family, I want this to be uh, the specific font from Google. And it's called, let me see, Nova Square, it's Q-U-A-R, and then comma cursive. And I'm gonna go above the root and I'm gonna import a Google font. So again, you do not have to do this. This is just to make it um, look the way I have it. So just simply search Google Fonts and click on Google Fonts here. And then once it loads up, I believe I typed in Nova. And it looks like it's this one right here. So Nova Square with this like, can't pronounce that, but uh, click on this one, hit select style. And then pretty much when you go to embed, go to import because we're gonna be using multiple pages. So if you do the one on link, you're gonna have to copy in every single HTML font, it's gonna be annoying. And just copy just the import right there without take out don't uh, get the style tags and then just copy it there and then hit save and if I go back to home page you can see that the text looks just like the one I had earlier in the example so now let's start styling so I'm gonna go with h1 and then I'm gonna say font size 5.4 rem color I want this to be white and then I want the margin bottom to be five rem here. So now you can see it looks freaking ginormous, but that's okay. And then next I'm gonna do H2. I'm gonna say font size of five point, no, actually 4.2 rem. And then margin bottom, I'm gonna say just four rem. And next I'm gonna target the container now. So this is what we created in our first HTML page. So I'm gonna go ahead and do dot containers, so targeting the class container. Let's set a width to 100 viewport width. Let's see heights, 100 viewport heights. Display flex, justify content center, align item center. So typical things you see with um, Flexbox. And then uh, 
I'm gonna set a max width to um, 80 rem, just to keep everything in the center. And you can't see it right now, but I'm about to center it with margin zero auto. So I haven't hit saved until now. And right now it looked like it just disappeared. So let me go ahead and add the padding to rem. And let me see what happened. So let me inspect this really quick. And it looks like you can still see it. So I guess it's just my, um, yeah, no, my computer is bugging out. But yeah, so here is what it looks like right now. And then let's go ahead and target the flex column, which was the class we have on, uh, we have over here on the div with the ID home. So here I was gonna say display flex and then flex direction column. And then we got flex center. Same thing, just by content center, and then we'll do align item center. And then we have additional ones that we can have just in case I end up adding some of these. So justify center. Let's just put justify content center here. And then we can do text center, then text align center there. And then last, let's do hidden and then display none. Now under this, let's create the button. So now if I go back here, you can see we have our classes with the BTN, so play and high score. So now when we edit this, you'll be able to see it finally. And also notice how everything's centered now. So button, we do font size of 2.4 rem. Let's do padding, I'm gonna do two rem with zero with let's do 30 rem text align center and then margin dash bottom so spacing from each other i'm gonna do one rem here text decoration let's do none and then color so i want the color to be rgb and then parentheses 28 comma 26 comma 26 and then background linear gradient and then within the parentheses is going to be a lot of typing so it'll be 90 degrees so 90 dg comma rgb of 18 comma 93 comma 255 and then we got zero percent comma RGB again and then parentheses now within here we're gonna do zero comma one zero two comma two fifty five and then go outside of this parentheses and do one hundred percent and then add the semicolon at the end and then you can see we have our buttons. Now you're probably wondering how did I come up with this? I mean there's free generators for linear gradients online, so I just basically have that from there. And then basically let's add a border radius to round out the corners of four pixels. So now it looks pretty similar to what we have. So now let's do button hover now. So button hover. And then it's gonna say cursor pointer. So that way it has a little hand symbol when you hover. Let's do box shadow. Say zero, 0, 0.4 rem, 1.4 rem, and then zero, and then RGB A parentheses. 8 comma 114 comma 244 comma 0 0.6 semicolon and then enter and we're gonna do transition I'm gonna say transform and then just put 150 milliseconds and then last one is transform scale 1.03 semicolon at the end save this and you can see we got the little scale action going up with the little shadow as well. So that's pretty much how I got that there. And let's add this one class here for disable because uh, once we do the JavaScript, you'll see this stuff added. So let's say cursor not allowed. So that was when you saw at the end when I couldn't click on the save button. And let's just do box shadow none and then just transform none.
And now let's see if I can target it. See if I have it on there. High score. Yeah. So I have a different color for the high score button. So now we're going to target the ID. So ID, which is hashtag high score dash BTN. And then it's going to be background. And for the linears, you have to do background because if you try background color, it's not going to work out. But here I'm going to copy it in. So what you could technically do is what you could do is copy this and then just change the RGB values, which is probably the easiest way to do it. And then if I go and save it, you can see that the uh, color has changed. Do hashtag high score dash BTN colon hover now. And then this time I want this to be uh, simply just box shadow this. So let's do box dash shadow and then 0, 0 0.4 rem, 1.4 rem, and then 0, and then art, RGBA with the color 255, 255 comma, and then 0 comma 0 0.5. So opacity at the end. And it looks like the crown, which is the FA-crown class. I want to get it to this size, so FA dash crown. And again, if you couldn't get the font also stuff to work, then just don't worry about this part. But uh, 2.5 rem, and then uh, margin dash left one rem. And I can see it like this. So now we have pretty much the um, homepage made. So now let's go ahead and create our game page. Because what happens when I clicked here, it's going to say this doesn't exist. So now we're going to go over here to the files and just type in game.html and while we're at it let's go ahead and just create the uh, css too so game.css and then uh, game.js so let me just get uh let's go back to html so exclamation mark and then just put like um quiz page and then let's go ahead and start editing this one. So first things first, I'm gonna have to link the Stata CSS this time because you wanna bring some of the class that we created from the previous one to it. And then also I'm gonna do link again and then we're just link our game.css. So first thing in the body, we're gonna have another container and then press tab, so class container enter and then we're gonna have ID so hashtag game and then class dot justify dash center dot flex dash column so C O L -M. tab and then we're gonna press enter into here and then we're gonna create an ID we're just gonna shortcut for um, HUD or heads up display and then press tab here then press enter and then I'm gonna do class hud dash item and then you can literally name this whatever you want to uh like progress or um just display bar but i'm gonna do that with class and then press tab here and then press enter here and i'm gonna do id so hashtag i'm gonna say progress text and i'm gonna create a class called hud dash prefix press tab here then enter, and this actually should be a P tag. So let me change that really quickly. And I have an uh, extension too. I think it changes both of these at the same time. So in case you're wondering if yours isn't already doing that, let's just put question here. And then under the P tag, so I'm gonna press enter now. I'm gonna say ID of progress bar, press tab, and then enter in the progress bar, I'm gonna say, Hashtag, so ID again, progress bar full, and then press tab. So this is gonna be empty because we're gonna be editing it with JavaScript and CSS. So right now, you just won't have to worry about putting anything in here. And then outside of this div right here, so here's the first progress bar. And I'm gonna go outside of the HUD item, so the heads of display, and now we're gonna press enter here. Oh, actually, I pressed the wrong button. Enter there. So you can see we're still in the heads up display, but I'm outside of the first HUD item. So now I'm gonna create another HUD item. I'm gonna just say HUD, so class, so dot, 
HUD item, press tab, then enter in here and I'm gonna say p.hud-prefix, press tab here, and then enter, and there's gonna be score. And now underneath the P tag, so the paragraph tag, I'm gonna say h dash main dash text, and then we'll put hashtag score. So now we created a class and a ID, and I'm gonna just leave it at zero for right now. I'm gonna hit save. So right now you're probably wondering what's going on. So if I were to hit play, you can see that we have essentially our scoreboard up there, but it just there's nothing you can't really tell because it's not styled yet. So now out of the H1, then click now on the div, and then on the next div. So right now here's the full HUD um, div. So we're gonna press enter now. So we're still inside of the uh, game ID div, but we're outside of this div now. So hit enter right here. And pretty much what we're gonna do is add our questions so you can see essentially what it looks like. So let's go ahead and do the first one. So hashtag, so that would be question. So ID question, press tab and say, what is the answer to this question? Now this is just filler, just so that you can see what's going on. And the text is black right now, so you can't really tell, but uh, eventually once we color it with CSS, you'll see it. I'm gonna say dots, choice container, press tab, and then enter here, and then dot choice dash prefix, press tab there, and that's just gonna be like A, B, C, D type stuff, so enter under that one, and then we're gonna do, that should be a P tag actually, so let me make sure, change that, and then P tag again, dot choice dash text, and it's gonna be just choice of, let's see, C -H -O -I -C -E. And then we're gonna have to add a data attribute to this so that we can actually figure out what we're uh, clicking on. So it's usually data dash and whatever you end up naming it. So I'm gonna say data dash number. I'm gonna set that equal to, this is number one. And pretty much what we can do here is now we have this created, this choice container, we pretty much can copy this the amount of times we have our questions. So that's the first one, press enter. Second one, third one, fourth one. So now I can just change this to like B. This would be data number two. And then we got C, data number three, and then D, data number four. And then this could be like choice two, choice three, choice four. If I zoom in, you can kind of see what's going on, but that's pretty much what it looks like right now. And then before you forget, go to the bottom, the last div you have on your page, and then type in script colon SRC. So we add, add our uh, game.js file here. All right, so we're pretty much good with the HTML. Let's go to CSS and make this look a little better. So I'm gonna target the body is the first thing. Curly braces, I'm gonna say color, first thing, FFF. That way you can actually see what's going on. Now you can see it better. And let me shrink this for you real quick. So now it's gonna target the um, choice container. So choice dash container, curly braces. I'm gonna say display flex, margin dash bottom of 0.8 rem. We got the width of 100%. Border radius, I want that to have rounded of four pixels. We got the background and that's going to be RGB of 18 comma 93 comma 255. And then we got font size of three rem. And then min width of 80 rem. So now you can see, it looks kind of crazy on mobile because we're gonna add mobile stuff soon, but this is what it looks like right now. It looks kind of strange, but let's go ahead and keep adding some stuff. And let's do choice dash container of hover. I'm gonna put cursor pointer. I'm gonna say box shadow. And it's gonna say, I think we have it copied already, but let's do zero, 0 0.4 rem, 
1.4 RAM, 0, RGB A of 6, comma, 103, comma, 247, comma, and then opacity will be 0 0.5. And then save that. And under this part, so let me make sure you can see this better. I'm going to say transform scale 1.02. And then transition, transform. I'm gonna do 100 milliseconds here. And it looks like I put a semicolon here instead of a colon. So now if I go, you can see, it looks kind of ugly right now, but uh, you can see how it looks like this. Let me drag that back over. And then let's do dot choice dash prefix. And let's do padding of 2 rem, and then that's top and bottom, and then 2.5 for left and right. And then let's do color white. So now they look ginormous, but don't worry, we're gonna fix this eventually. Choice text. We're gonna do a uh, padding of 2 rem, and then width of 100%. Semicolon right there. And let's actually go ahead and um, let me add the media query right now because you can't really see what's going on. So let's do add media screen and let's do max with colon 768 pixels. Curly brace is going to target the choice container. And it's going to say min dash width of uh, 40 rep. All right, it's much better. Now you can actually see what's going on. And then let's go back above this under the choice text. And then let's go and add the correct. So right now it looks like this. What we're going to do is add the dot correct. So this is what happens in the JavaScript when it turns uh, green. So it's basically background colon linear gradients of 32 degrees comma RGB parentheses 11 comma 2 2 3 comma and if you don't want to type this out you can just type in green it doesn't it's the same effect I just wanted mine to be look, look a little different and then let's say 0% comma RGB the RGB is normally parentheses 41 232 111 Outside the parentheses now, 100%, and then semicolon after that. Now we can basically copy this and just say incorrect. And then I just want to change the RGB, so I'm going to say and erase this part and just say 230, comma, 29, comma, 29, comma, then one. And then for the second part, I want it to be. 224 comma 111 well, actually 11 one, one, comma 11 one, one, comma 1 and there we have it there now let's add the heads of display on the top so let's see let me just put heads up display here presenter really quick now so targeting the ID of HUD let's say display of flex Justify content space between. So this essentially pushes it pretty much out to the edge. And then actually you can see here. Under the HUD, I'm gonna do dot HUD dash prefix. I'm gonna say text align center. Then font size would be two rem. And then let's go under here. Let's target dot hud dash main dash text. Curly braces and just do text align and that's gonna be center here. And now I'm gonna target the progress bar now. So this is what you saw the loading type effect. And I'm gonna say width of 20 rem heights of 3 rem border 
is 0.2 rem solid RGB just RGB 11 comma 223 comma 36 we got margin dash top 2 rem border radius 50 pixels and then overflow set that to hit so now it looks like this I'm gonna press enter here I'm gonna do hashtag progress bar full question mark or not question curly braces my bad and then we're simply gonna just say uh, height 100% background looks like it's the same so I should copy this RGB color here so background here type down RGB and then width would just be 0% to start off with so now if we look at the page it currently looks like this so you can see that it looks like this and that's currently what we got going on here so now let's go ahead and edit the JavaScript now because nothing is happening and then if I go back to home can't really do anything right now so I know why it didn't um it's making my thing look weird let me see if I mess type something also I realized why the text is so small is because in the HTML I put a div instead of an h1 so let me see yeah this should be an h1 okay so h1 so go back to game.html and change the question we typed to h1 okay that makes so much more sense now it actually looks much much better here and now you can see it's nice and fitting so pretty much this is what, look, what it looks like right now but what now we have to do is uh add in our javascript now let's go to our game and here's the fun part so first thing is we're going to have to select our items that we're going to target so i'm going to go const question so that equal to documents. So if you ever did anything with a DOM, then you pretty much know how this works. But the way you do is type document. And I'm gonna do query selector, right? So now depending on who you talk to, from what I've learned is that query selector is the most uh, neutral way of doing things because I can target both the class and an ID. So in case I were ever to change my ID to a class or a class and ID, I can basically still target it or just simply change it. So putting the quotes and hashtag question. Because if I were to put um, document that get element by ID and I end up changing that to a, a class, then this would be all messed up. But again, it just depends on who you um, learn from. And then now I'm just going to go and do shift alt down arrow again to copy this. And I'm going to copy this two, three, four, five times. Next thing I'm going to target is the uh, choices. So I'm going to save this. So I'm just naming it. Choice. This is the variable. I'm just naming it as choices. And then here we're going to do document .create selector all. And essentially we're going to target the dot choice dash text. Now I want to have this in an array. So basically you're going to say array dot from and wrap it around like this. The next one we're going to have is uh, progress text. And then it's going to simply target the ID of progress text. And then here we're going to target the score text. And then simply go down to the question and then just put hashtag score. And again, if you're confused what's going on, these are all of the classes that we have here and then also id scores there and then you can see the rest on the html and then last one we got is the progress bar full actually yeah and then this is simply going to say progress bar full let's save this so nothing happens yet because we haven't done anything but the first thing I'm going to do is create a, another variable, save it as let's. I'm going to say current question. I'm going to save it equal to an empty object, so there's nothing inside of this. I'm going to say let accepting answers. Make sure I spell that right. 
So this is equal to true. And again, I'm not using semicolons most of the time. I did up here, I don't know why I did it. I didn't realize that, but again, you don't have to use semicolons if you don't want to for JavaScript. So I'm gonna just keep it for the rest of the video. Let score equals zero, and then let question counter equals to zero. So the score starting at zero, and also the question starting at zero. And then we're gonna say let available. I'm gonna spell it available questions. So equal to an empty array. And now we're gonna create the questions that I I just made these up, but basically we're gonna save it to a variable called questions. So let questions equal to an array. Now within this array, we're gonna create an object and pretty much gonna have the question. Colon. I'm just gonna put um, you know what is two plus two and then comma I'm gonna say choice one colon I'm just gonna put quotes of two comma and then we can basically do this up to the four so this can be choice two change that to four on oh, no, 21 three four it's gonna be like oh, no, 17 then after this comma, I'm gonna say answer colon, and this is basically saying that number two is equal to four, which would be choice two here. And then put a comma here, and then basically we can just copy this and do this again. So that'd be question two, question three, then question four, then just erase a comma at the end. And now I have all this stuff saved, so um, Again, you can add custom questions that you want, but I don't want to have to retype the entire thing all over again. So I'm just going to copy in my questions. But basically, you can see here. Now, again, you could literally, it doesn't really matter what you put. Just make sure they're different questions so you can under see actually what's going on. And that's pretty much the questions tab. So now, under this, let's create another constant here. Let's say const score underscore points and I'm capitalizing it it's just known in JavaScript that um, essentially if something's going to be a fixed and you're not planning on changing it so I'm gonna say 100 here and then cons max underscore questions that's gonna be for for right now now we're gonna create a function now called start game I'm gonna do arrow syntax and basically we're gonna put in here I'm gonna set the question counter is starting at zero and score can be at zero and then available questions which we have up here this is going to be equal to an array and we're going to use a spread operator to basically get all the values from questions so we're basically getting all of these question values here and then pretty much uh, get new questions and then boom. And now we have to create this function here, get new question, because you can't call it if nothing's there. So now I'm gonna say get new question. So that equals to error function here, parentheses, and we're gonna say if available questions dot length it's equal to zero or the questions counter is greater than the max let me see miss greater than max underscore questions what we're going to do here is we're going to say local storage so we're saving this to local storage now we're going to say set item and then we're going to have most recent score then comma score and then now we're gonna say return window, let's see, dot location, actually yeah. And then we're gonna sign slash in dot HTML. And it should be in quotes, by the way. So this is essentially gonna keep track of the score here and then let's add some more functionality to this. So let's do question counter. We do plus plus, and then we say progress text 
dot inner text, and this is gonna say equal to temp. Uh, uh, so we put the back ticks. I'm gonna do temp a little bit of this. So question dollar sign curly braces. I'm gonna put question counter, and then of max underscore questions. So this essentially is gonna be like question one of four, two of four, three of four, etc. And it's incrementing by one each time. And then we're gonna update the progress bar by saying progress bar, f yeah, the wrong one. progress bar full and dot style dot, not that one, style dot width. I'm gonna set that equal to back ticks, dollar sign curly braces, question counter, and we're gonna divide this by the max underscore questions. And then pretty much we have to put this in parentheses. So go to cover this with parentheses. So right now it's in parentheses and then they're gonna say times 100. And they go outside the curly braces and then put a percent sign. So it's basically going to calculate what question we're on and then Correspond that with the percentage that we are currently at. Now we have const questions index. And it looks like I have the brace here. Yeah. So make sure the back ticks there. So now we have const question index. And we're going to say equal to math.floor. So we're going to round this and then put math.random to so get a random number. We're going to times this by available questions dot length. So that's how we're going to calculate the value of the question index here. And then we're going to say current question. We're going to set that equal to available questions. And then the array. And then say questions index, which is the one we just had up there. So it's basically going to keep track of what question we're on. And then question dot inner text is equal to current question dot question. So that's essentially the the question that we're having. So it's gonna know which question, basically the text or AKA the question to ask. And now for choices, we're gonna do choices dot for each and then we're going to pass in choice parameter, then arrow function, curly braces here. I'm going to say const number is equal to choice dot data set. So this is the data set uh, that we had earlier with the um, data dash number. And I'm basically going to save it to the number. And that way I'll know what um, choice that we're clicking on. And then we have choice dot inner text so that equal to current question then a uh, array and then basically quotes choice plus the number okay that's the inner text now and then outside of this choice we're going to create available questions here and we're going to splice it and we're going to put questions index and then comma one so you can see your splice kind of gives essentially what it shows remove elements from an array and if necessary answers new elements in their place returning the lead item so that's basically the questions index that we had created wait see right here yeah right there and then we're going to put accepting answers make sure that it's set to true so now we're going to go outside of the get new question, create another, we're going to do choices, we're going to do choices again, and we're going to, sign, we're going to iterate through it again with for each, pass in choices, parameter, arrow function, and basically we're going to say choice.addEventListener, and what happens when we click, so we're going to say click, we're going to set E, arrow function, curly brace, enter, say if is not equal to accepting answers, we're just basically going to return. And then 
under this, we're going to say accepting answers. We're going to set that equal to false now. And then we're going to say const selected choice equal to e.target. And I'm going to say const selected answers equal to selected choice, which you just made there, dot data set of the number, which would be the, again, the choice one, two, three, four. And then I'm going to say let class to apply equal to selected answer. And we're gonna say if that's equal to the current question dot answer, we're gonna use ternary. So basically, it's gonna be if that's true, we put a question mark. We're gonna to say toggle the correct CSS that we created with the green, or if it's false, toggle the red CSS bar, which is classified by incorrect. And then we basically have to go say if class to apply is equal to cor let me see, correct curly brace here increment score by score underscore points. So I believe I put this. Yeah, so here's score points, 100 points per question. So basically, if you get the question correct, you're going to increase your score by 100 points. And then we're going to go here and say selected let's see, choice. We're going to target the parent element. We're going to say class list dot add class to apply. So that way we can add it whenever we get it right. I'm gonna say set timeout. So that way whenever we do click on the question, right or wrong, it'll, it'll have time to show us. So we're gonna say pass in error function, empty parentheses, curly brace there. And I'm gonna say selected choice dot parent elements dot class list dot remove class to apply. And then we're going to call get new question. So this is going to run now. And it's going to give us the next question. And then basically within the curly brace here, you're going to say comma 1000. So now you can see what happens whenever I click it right now. It uh, basically is turning red and it's giving us nothing because the end page doesn't exist. Let's so go under here. And let's go ahead and do increment score. So that equal to num. And that's just the parameter I put here. And then basically we're gonna say score. Make sure we add that to the num. And then we're gonna say let's see score text dot inner text. And we'll make sure that updates to score. Let me get rid of this quotes here. And then last, we're going to have start game and we'll call it here. And right now when I click on it, nothing is happening. So I'm going to inspect this. And it says questions counter is not defined on 60. So it should be right here. Let me see if that's. All right. So it looks like I, because I misspelled it, I had it as up here. I have it saved as question counter with no S. So that was this little typo. So now if I click X. You can pretty much see. Make sure you zoom this out here. See, there's the quiz, and we got our bar. What the percentage score is here? Let's see. Uh, I'm just click on something. So score is updating. Let's see. We click wrong. It's red. Turns green. Tallest building. And let's see Dubai. And then let's put four here. So right now, nothing's gonna happen because um, we haven't created the end page. Well, you can see pretty much most of the quiz functionality is working now. So that's pretty sweet to have that. So let's go and let's create our end page. So we got, I think, two more pages we have to create because um, the high score page as well. So I'm going to go here and then click a new file. And let's create the end.html. 
you're probably wondering why are we creating these is because they're essentially linking to this file here and then let's make a n.js so again for the html and end, uh, just press exclamation mark tab i'm just going to leave the title blank for now don't even worry about it and then just link the style.css and then we're gonna have to go back to our index and get this um font awesome that's if you're following along with that just so we can get the logo and then pretty much here we're going to target the container again so container press enter and then hashtag we have end and then class b dot flex center dot flex column then enter into here and then basically we're going to say h1 hashtag final score I just set it at zero for right now and then underneath this we're going to create a form and I'm going to say with a class of end form container and actually we don't have to worry about that because we're going to do some stuff with JavaScript and then enter here and then within the form we're going to create an h2 with the id of n-text and basically it's going to say enter your name below to save your score so let's actually um let's go through this really quick so i can show you what we're actually editing so here is the end page right here and then h2 there now let's do inputs Type's gonna be text. Name is equal to. It should be name. ID is equal to username, and then we have place holder equal to enter your name. Save that there. Now we got the input. So now outside of this input, we're gonna create a uh, button. So button. And let's do class so dot btn hashtag save score btn and then go back inside the button i want to add the type equals to submit and then on click i'm going to set that equal to save high score parentheses event and then right now we're going to leave it as um pretty much disabled because I don't want uh, people to actually click on that. And then in the button, we're just gonna say uh, save. So now we have the save text. So outside this button now, then we go outside of the form, and then we're gonna create another link. We're gonna say a.btn. And then this is gonna link to the slash game.html. And then within the a tag, we're just going to say play again. And then I believe we're going to copy this down again. And it's going to say go home. So go home. And this is just going to be the slash, which is our home link right there. And then I have the um, home icon from Font Awesome. So I can just copy that in there and basically save here. So now pretty much is what it looks like. So now all we have to do is um, style this. So I'm gonna go back to our CSS on style, just so we can just add this again to the bottom. I'm gonna say like end page CSS here. So let's go back to style CSS. So here I'm gonna say dot end dash form dash container. Simply gonna set it to a width of 100%. Say display flex here. And then flex direction. Want this to be column. And then let's do align items, center. And then max width will be 30 rep. So it currently looks like right there. And then let's go ahead and edit the inputs. Let's do margin bottom. Set that to one rem. Let's do width 
20 RAM. And then let's go Patty, 1.5 RAM. Font size, let's do 1.8 RAM. Border, let's set that equal to none. And then box shadow, set equal to 0, 0 0.1 RAM, 1.4 RAM, 0 RGBA. Parentheses 86, comma 185, comma 235, comma 0 0.5. Got it like this. And then just do input colon colon placeholder. Curly braces. And then the color is simply gonna be hashtag AAA. And then let's do ID of username. Curly braces to say margin dash bottom of three rem width is a hundred percent and then outline is equal to none so now you can see how it's starting to look much much better and then we're almost done with this css we're going to say id so hashtag n dash text we're going to put a font size of 2.4 rem we're going to say color of white so hashtag fff then text Align is going to be center. Then we're going to have save score btn. Set the border equal to none. And then I'm just going to target the icon. So FA home. And that's going to be margin dash left colon one rem. Font size equal to two rem. And then color equals to RGB of 28 comma 26 comma 26. Okay, so this is pretty much what we got going on here. And as you can see, the save button is disabled until you actually enter something. And we have to add some more JavaScript, I believe, to fix this. So let's go ahead and let's go to the end JS now. So I have it created up here. And now what we're going to do is target, so const username, so that equal to document dot query selector, parentheses, and we're going to target quotes, hashtag username, which again, that's the, um, that's basically the input, the placeholder. And then I'm just going to copy this four times, so for like this, and then basically I'm going to say save score btn. It was document that query selector of save score btn. Then I have final score, and that is equal to final score. And then we got most recent score, and that is going to be equal to most recent score. And let's go down, press enter here, and I'm gonna say const high scores, which is our high score page. And I'm gonna say we're gonna parse this because we're charting the local storage. We have to make sure it's string, so parse local storage. Dot. We're getting the item now this time. High scores. And outside of this parentheses, let me make sure you can see this. And I say or the empty array right here and then cons max underscore high underscore scores is equal to five and i'm gonna say final score should i spell this right final score dots inner text we're going to set that equal to the most recent score and then here we're going to target username so username dots at event listener parentheses and say key up so whenever we press a key this essentially is going to re-enable the save button error function make sure you yeah, make sure you type that in right and then say save score btn dot disabled is equal to the username dot value so basically save score disabled if it's equal to the username dot value is not true then basically they're set there. 
and then save high score is equal to e, which is equal to arrow function. We say e dot prevent default. So basically, this allows us to click the button and it doesn't just automatically refresh or mess it up. And right now, nothing's gonna happen yet because we're not finished. But um, now I'm gonna target or create a uh, variable called const score. So that equal to score and just leave this value to most region score there with a comma and then we're going to say name and I'm going to leave the value equal to username dot value so now outside of this variable we're going to say high scores dot now we're going to push this score value onto high scores and then now let's go and say high scores dot sorts and then pretty much gonna say a comma b is the parameters error function and then here we're gonna return in b dot score minus a dot score and then high scores dot splice s p l i c we're gonna throw it at the fifth number here so again removes elements from an array and if necessary inserts new elements in their place deleting the elements there and then we're going to target local storage now so local storage dot set item i'm going to pass in high scores i'm going to say json we got to stringify this and we're going to stringify the high scores and then under that we're going to say window dot location location dot assign I'm going to say dot, or not, I'm going to say close slash here. And then pretty much this is all the code for the end.js. So right now, nothing is going to happen because um, we still have to create the high scores page. So you can't really see what's going on. And this can't say anything to the high score page because it doesn't exist. But so far, most of our things work. So last but not least, let's create another file. So click on here and it's gonna be highscores.html. And let me exit out all these so you can see much better. And then I'm gonna create a highscores.css. And then I'm gonna create a highscores. You guessed it. JavaScript. All right, so again, exclamation mark, just say high scores. And then here, again, we're gonna have to target the um, link, star.css. We're gonna link again, we're gonna link the high scores.css. And then we're gonna have to copy the uh, Fun Awesome CDN which is right there and then copy that there and again let's do dot container in the container we're going to say hashtag high scores and then we say dot again flex center then dot flex column so in here we're going to say hashtag final score it's going to be leaderboard, which is why I called it. And let me actually go to this page. You can't see right now, but that's what we're creating right here. And before I screw this up, we got to make sure this is an H1. And then we're going to create a UL with the ID of high scores list leave that empty then under that we're going to create an a tag so a link tag with the class of dot btn and then simply the href is going to be the home so slash and then I'm going to say go home and I'm just going to copy in my uh, font awesome icon so that's going to be uh, let's see here right there and then you can see it looks like this so now let's go to the CSS right here and let's start this up. So now the body 
going to be the color of hash hashtag white. We got high scores list. So this ID high scores list. Say list style is to none. And then margin dash bottom is for rem. And then we're going to say dot high dash score font size equal to 2.8 rem and then margin dash bottom is equal to 0 0.5 rem so now we don't have any scores yet so you can't see anything so let's go ahead and go to js so now we're going to say const high scores list is equal to document dot query selector and I'm going to say ID of high scores list. And then I'm going to say const high scores equals to JSON that parse. So parsing again, local storage. We're getting the item of high scores. And we're going to say or an empty array. And then we're going to say high scores list dot inner HTML. It's equal to, let me add this on another line, high scores. Now we're going to map. So we're basically creating a new array. We're entering through and creating a new array here. So it's a score parameter. Error function syntax. We're going to say return backticks here. We're going to say, li class is equal to high dash score quote again closing tag and it's basically going to be the score that you see so essentially you're going to say temple little dollar sign curly brace so score dot name and then that's basically whatever you type into the input at the end of the quiz is what that will fill in and then we're gonna say score dot score. And then we'll close it off with the li tag here. And at the end we have to join them. So I join it with just quotes here. So now let's go back and let's go through our quiz again. So let's see. Let me make it a little bigger. Let's see. Oh I forgot the answer this one. 400 Dubai here. And then now I have my name. Looks like I have some sort of errors. Let me inspect this really quick. Right, so one thing is go back to the end.html. This should just be on click like this. And I forgot to add the script tag. That is probably what was going on. So scripts end.js. So now let's hopefully see. Okay, there we go. Simple mistake, but well, let's just put my name or just put yo save it and now we go back and then click on the high scores and currently nothing's there yet so let's go ahead and let me make sure i put the script tags on all of the um html files really quick so this one's missing the high scores one okay there we go so script so go to high scores html script tag there and then simply put um high scores dot js so here is the end quiz that we created here so pretty much you go through it the green you can see the red let me see if i miss something red and then again green here and then just put your name save it and i can score right now it says null so it looks like we have one missing thing and it looks actually i believe oh that should be an easy fix and it should be on the, um, oh, I realized the error, we have simply this set to the ID. It should not be set to ID. It should just be most recent score because that is what we have here. And this should be set to actually, not document, this should actually be local storage. So that is the issue. And I just type it too quick, didn't realize this. And now if I go back, and let's actually bring it over here. 
let's go ahead and hit play and now let's see when I go enter and then it's four seven let's just put win save high score now you can see now we finally have it saved here as win so now if I were just to clear and delete this from local storage then they would just delete that but now you can see it is fully working so again this is the JavaScript HTML CSS quiz app. So if you did enjoy this video and want to follow me along my coding journey where I'm documenting myself, learning how to code and just show you guys what I am building, then definitely go down below and hit that subscribe button, give this video a thumbs up, share this with your friends and comment down below any suggestions or tips that you saw or anything that you thought about this video tutorial. And aside from that, I'll see you in the next video. Peace.